I'm Kristen and welcome to Cooking with Color for Kids for our holiday show. We're so excited to have you on the show today and we also have some special guests that are going to be cooking with us as well. On this show we'll be celebrating the festive colors of the season, red, green, and white for the holidays. I'm going to be making some delicious potato lakes with carrots, which are heirloom carrots, zucchini, and potatoes, along with a delicious homemade applesauce and some sour cream. We also have some special guests on the show, executive chef BJ Brown and his two kids, who are going to be making for us some homemade broccoli and cheese soup. I'm so excited to see what they have for us, and I know you will too. I'm pleased to announce our recipe contest. If you love cooking healthy and delicious dishes, are between the ages of 8 and 18, and love fresh fruits and vegetables, we invite you to enter our recipe contest. Each month, we'll choose three winners, and the winners will appear with me on the next edition of Cooking with Color for Kids. If you don't live in New York City, don't worry. We can Skype you in, and you can join us on the show from wherever you live. See the link below to see details on how to enter the contest. Inspire families around the country to eat well. First Lady Michelle Obama, the USDA, United States Department of Education, and Epicurious have teamed together to create a healthy lunchtime recipe contest. We like all of our recipes on Cooking with Color to follow the same guidelines. So the recipes should be healthy. Fresh fruits and vegetables should make up at least half of the dish also including some low-fat dairy, lean protein, and whole grains. They should also be delicious, which means they should just be fresh, simple, and yummy. Also be original. The dish should be something that you created and not something from a published source. It should be affordable, meaning no fancy ingredients are necessary. Last but not least, they should be meaningful. We want to know what inspired you to make the dish and the story behind it. to introduce you to our special guest, Chef BJ Brown from New Jersey. Hi, welcome Chef. Hi, how are you? Thank you so much for having me. You're so welcome. Uh, we're actually going to, he's got his two kids here who we're going to meet later, um, but I wanted to introduce you to the chef and find out a little bit more about what you're making for us today. And before we get into that, maybe tell us a little bit about you and where you're from and what are you doing today? <laughs> okay, well, I am from New Jersey. I've worked on the Jersey Shore my entire life. Um, right now, I am the executive chef at the Essex and Sussex of Spring Lake. Uh, where we specialize in seasonal local American cuisine. And prior to that, I owned my own business, Bistro by the Beach, and we had that for about three and a half years. Okay. For, so. Which beach was that? It was in Spring Lake as well. It was oh, a block away okay. from where for from where I work right now. Okay, great. I love the Jersey Shore. Making a cream of broccoli soup okay. with roasted peppers and um, creme fraiche. And my biggest inspiration was uh, my son Connor, who this is his absolute 100% favorite meal of okay. all time. Okay, okay. And obviously you've tied in the colors of our holiday show theme with the red peppers, the green broccoli, the cheese and the cream. So we're loving that too. So first we started with um, melting our butter down and then we're going to add our carrots, our onions and our garlic. Okay, once those are translucent, we're going to go ahead and start making a roux and add our flour and mix that all together. Okay, following that, once the roux is nice and tight, we're going to add about a quart of hot chicken stock. And we're going to bring that to a boil for approximately five minutes. Once the five minutes are up, we're gonna go ahead and finish it with broccoli and let that cook for about two or three minutes until the broccoli is extremely soft. Then we're gonna place this mixture into a blender with a little bit of cheddar cheese and Parmesan cheese. Mm, tough part. <laughs> it is, it makes it cheesy. And then from there, we'll season it with a little bit of salt and pepper. And voila, we have easy uh, broccoli cheddar soup. Thank you so much for um, sharing your recipe with us and I can't wait to try it. And we are so looking forward to meeting your two kids who are coming up next. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. So welcome to Cooking with Color for Kids. I'm so excited to have you on the show. What is your name and how old are you? 
My name is Connor, and I'm seven years old. Seven years old, and you are from? Howell, New Jersey. Howell, New Jersey. Well, we are so excited to have you here. Um, tell us, how did you learn how to cook? Um, I used to be in my father's restaurant. You did? What did you um, help him do while you were there? I helped him be a waitress. Okay, so you, you delivered food to the actual customers. What is your um, favorite thing to cook? You said you cook a lot with your dad, right? Yeah. And what is your favorite thing to cook with your dad? Um, ribs. Ribs. What kind of ribs? Uh, the big ones. The big ones. Okay. What is your favorite food? Um, but sweet potatoes. Sweet potatoes. Okay, I love sweet potatoes, and we're going to be having those for Thanksgiving. Um, how do you and your dad cook your sweet potatoes? Um, In the oven? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> do you guys make a casserole or do you do the, the whole potatoes? The whole potatoes. The whole potatoes. That's how I like them too. Okay, so on to our first question. Which one out of these veggies has the most vitamin C and is good for your eyes? And what's that? A carrot. A carrot. Awesome. Great job. Okay, um, now we're going to do it a little bit harder. Bless you. Um, which veggie here actually grows a flower? Yes, the squash. Have you ever tried a squash zucchini flower? Um, yeah. Yeah, I'm sure your dad, who's a chef, makes them a lot. So, great answer. And then, um, last question. Out of all the veggies here, which one is the most popular for Thanksgiving and Christmas? Potatoes, yes. A favorite cooking show that you have? Uh, this one. This one. He has said all the right answers. We love this kid. Thank you so much, Connor, and we're so excited to have you on answering some fun questions for Cooking with Color for Kids. going to be making you some awesome holiday recipes. Um, one of my favorite things to make around the holidays are potato latkes or pancakes, which I'm sure you guys have heard of. Um, but today I'm going to do a healthy twist by um, adding some zucchini and some heirloom carrots, which come in red, orange, yellow, and white, almost a green top, but um, to make them super healthy and they're just as good, I absolutely promise. I'm, all, I'm going to show you how to make that in a second. I'm also going to show you guys or tell you how to make some leftovers turkey into turkey pot pies, which are super easy, super good, standard favorite of mine over the holidays for when you're sick of just eating the turkey. So first off, with the latkes, um, you want to get some russet potatoes. They're the big ones that you bake with. Um, I'm sure you could use other smaller potatoes, but these are um, less moist so they actually hold up firm a little bit better. Um, you're going to want two potatoes and then you're going to take one zucchini and about two carrots and I usually peel the carrots, peel the potatoes, don't need to peel the zucchini because there's actually lots of um, beautiful nutrients and vitamins in the skin and what you're going to do is you're going to take a big cheese shredder and you're going to just shred those until you get about four cups of potato, carrot, and zucchini, and you're gonna throw that into a bowl. Then you're gonna add, um, if you'd like to add a little bit of cheese, you could, like maybe some grated or shredded parm. Um, I didn't do that for this time, but it's because I'm doing a sweet applesauce, I'm gonna show you guys how to make too. Then you can add um, a little bit of onion. Um, you can also grate that. You want it to be super fine so that everything kind of sticks together. If it's too loose, everything just kind of falls apart. Um, along with the veggies, the onion, um, you can do some salt and pepper. If you want to add a little bit of garlic, that's cool too. Um, and then you're going to take your beaten eggs and about a cup of flour and you're going to mix it all together into a big mashy mush of orange, green, red, yellow, and potato goodness. From there, you're going to, um, it's so easy. You can actually just do them in a big frying pan, maybe put two to three 
tablespoons, generous tablespoons of oil in the pan over medium high. And you're gonna scoop each one for this size, about three tablespoons. Make it into like a little bit of a ball. And then you're gonna kind of mash them into the pan. And you're gonna just cook them for maybe about five or six minutes, flipping them once or twice till they get nice and golden brown. But you want them to get cooked through. Um, and then you're gonna take the finished ones, put them on a paper towel, let the oil and the grease drain off a little bit. And then I'm gonna tell you about the applesauce that I made. This is actually sort of a chunky sauteed applesauce. I didn't mash it purposely because I wanted the bright, beautiful red color. And again, when you keep skin on your fruits and veggies, there's actually a lot more vitamins and nutrients. So I chose to keep the skin on. Um, it's so easy. You're gonna take maybe four medium to large apples, chop them up in a small dice. Um, you're gonna throw those into a medium saucepan with some sugar, of course, probably about half a cup, three quarters of a cup of sugar. What I did to actually give it a little more flavor and a little more caramely color is I added um, half sugar and half coconut sugar, which is kind of a brown sugar, and it gives it a nice caramely brown sugar flavor, and it's good for you. It's all coconut, so that's kind of cool. Um, I put in a cinnamon stick in with the water and the sugar. If you want to sprinkle a little bit of regular cinnamon, you can do that too, but a cinnamon stick works just as well, and you just actually take it out. Um, it's kind of cute to serve with the applesauce. Um, and you just put that all in a pan and over maybe like medium, medium high. Let it cook down for about, I would say, 20 minutes. Um, and then you have a nice, chunky, kind of sauteed um, applesauce. You could also add a little honey, if you'd like, or agave instead of sugar. Um, and if you want a smoother applesauce, all you really need to do at this point, um, I would probably have peeled the apples if you want a smooth applesauce so you don't have the skin. Cook them down the same way I just told you about with the sugar and the water. Um, but then you just mash it with a potato masher or you could use um, some kind of a blender, you know, like a little handheld blender to kind of mash it together, like mashed potatoes, because the apples actually get really soft. Now to serve these, they're so good. Um, what I do is I take one of the latkes, or two or three, because I love eating them. And actually, I'll start with the applesauce. You want to put a little bit of it on top. This is so good. You can smell the cinnamon and the brown sugar and the yummy potatoes. Add a little bit of sour cream on top. If you want an extra added touch, you could do some little chopped chives or dill or little fresh herbs on top. And you have a delicious, fun little appetizer or side dish or brunch dish for the holidays. So there you go. Obviously, we, we cook so much for the holidays. We have so much leftovers. What do we do with it other than making turkey sandwiches? So I um, love making little pot pies, and they're so easy to make. Um, you just get the little ramekins. Um, they're probably about, I don't know, three or four quart. You can buy them online or any kind of a cooking store. You can get like a set of six of them. Um, what I do is I take a, a, the leftover turkey, 
You want probably about a cup or two of it and you want to dice it up skinless. You can use white meat, dark meat, whichever is your favorite or both. Um, you're also going to take a couple of carrots. You're going to shave them, get all the skin off of there and you're going to dice those up. Um, I threw in a little zucchini just for fun and a little extra color. Um, but you can also put in, um, obviously, some potatoes is a, a standard thing. Um, green peas, which I don't have here today, but they're actually in there and they're really, really good. Any of your leftover veggies would actually really work. You know, think about it. You've got leftover, I don't know, roasted sweet potatoes, you've got peas, you've got carrots, whatever veggies you want to put. As long as you have about two cups of it, you're good. So. What you want to do first is you want to start out by making your sauce. You're going to take a couple tablespoons of butter. You want a big pot because you're going to kind of make a nice big yummy filling for this. So take about um, half a stick to three quarters of a stick of butter. You're going to melt that down. Then you're going to take about three quarters of a cup of flour. You're going to throw that in there and you're going to kind of mix it around and make a little bit of a roux. Then you just take about a cup of chicken stock and you guys can get the recipe um, online. We'll post those. So I'm just kind of telling you how to make it. Um, throw the chicken stock in there, let that kind of cook down so you have a nice kind of milky, brothy um, roux per se. And then you're gonna actually add your vegetables and you're gonna cook them. So if you're using raw veggies, you wanna probably let them cook for about 10, 15, maybe even 20 minutes depending, unless you wanna microwave them a little ahead of time um, to kind of pre-cook them. If you're using frozen veg, you maybe want to let them defrost a little bit or cook them in a pan. You can actually just throw them in and you don't have to cook them as long. Um, again, for veggies that have skins on them, you probably want to peel them with a squash. You can leave them, um, but feel free to use any veggies that you want. And then you're going to really just add that all together, right? You made your sauce with the butter, the flour, the stock, yum. Throw in your veggies, mix those around, let them cook a little bit. And then to top it all off, you've got your turkey, which is already cut and already cooked. So that doesn't really have to cook very long. I throw in some cheese and that actually makes it even better. So there's two ways you can do this. The way I did it was when I was making the sauce threw the veggies in there, I added some thin sliced Swiss cheese, which actually melts really good. You could use shredded cheddar or Colby Jack, Monterey, any kind of cheese that you like. Um, Swiss just has a nice flavor, goes well with the veggies and the turkey, and um, it melts really good. So you're going to put that in from there. Um, you're going to actually start building your pot pies. Now, an alternative way you could do it is if you want to just make the sauce with the veggies and the turkey, you can put the cheese in your little ramekin on the bottom. Put your filling into each ramekin. You want to fill it up almost to the top, but not all the way because it might spill over when you bake it. This is the easiest way to make a pot pie is you buy frozen puff pastry because to make it by hand, um, it would actually take forever and it's great, but so easy. Um, you're going to take a big puff pastry sheet. You're going to cut it in little quarters and then each square you basically just put on top of here and kind of mold the sides if you want to cut them and you know, you could have them a little more square or if you have extra dough, you can make a little design on top for the holidays, a little star or a leaf or whatever, whatever you fancy. Um, but you're really going to just take those puff pastry sheets. You're going to put them on top. You're going to take an egg and whisk it a little bit. And then you're going to brush the top, which gives it a nice, like kind of little shiny coating when you bake it. And then you take all your little ramekins, put them on a baking sheet, pop them in an oven for about, I don't know, 20 minutes, 15, 20 minutes on 350. Um, and once these start puffing up a little bit and they're golden brown, they're done. You take them out, maybe let them cool for a few minutes and you're gonna dig in and it is the most delicious thing in the world. So much better than using Camp Campbell's mushroom soup. Um, it's such an easy thing to make and it's so good and it's a great way to use up all of your holiday leftovers. So I'm just gonna do a little bite here. Hopefully you can see in there, we'll get this top off. It's yummy pastry. Oh, here we go. So you can see all the yummy goodies in here. You've got leftover chicken, you've got peas, there's some carrots, there's a little zucchini in there. Yum, delicious. So there you go. 
I hope you guys enjoy your holidays and we're so happy to have you on and I hope you enjoy the recipes and have a great holiday season. today. We hope you enjoyed it and also learned something too. Please join us for more healthy, colorful recipes on our next edition of Cooking with Color for Kids. And don't forget to enter for our contest for a chance to join me on a future edition of Cooking with Color for Kids. You can see details on the address below on the screen.